All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Again, my name is Dustin Adkison, and uh, today's webinar is going to be on data modules and data sets. Um, Brian, if you could go to the next slide. So a quick agenda, we're going to go through uh, who our featured speakers are, uh, talk briefly about who is PM Square, and we'll provide a demo of data modules and data sets, and then we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into featured speakers. Uh, my name again is Dustin Adkison. I'm the managing partner here at PM Square uh, for today. I'm also the webinar MC. And then we have Ryan Dolly, uh, who is our product manager and solution architect for PM Square. <laughs> And uh, he'll be presenting <laughs> the content on data sets and data modules. Um, if, you, if you have any questions uh, in the, the area to the right, <laughs> sorry, uh, there's a question area. You can, uh, you can click in there and ask any questions that you have. Uh, we're also going to have a few polls. So try to stay engaged as much as you can, because we'll, we'll be asking a few questions as we go along. All right, so uh, just briefly, who is PM Square? Uh, we're a professional services company and a software solutions provider. So professional services would be implementations, deployments, training, uh, providing more strategy-based uh, services. Um, and then on the software solutions, we provide our own proprietary solutions in addition to custom software development and then IBM license management. Um, you'll see on the right some of the areas we've been awarded. We've received multiple awards from IBM, as well as uh, the distribution channels for IBM. Uh, we've got consultants who've won free cars with their, their Cognos expertise. We've got, uh, I believe, three or four IBM champions. And then uh, for those of you that don't know, we have Cognos Paul, who is probably one of the better known names in the, the world of Cognos. So typically, if you have any need around analytics or Cognos, it's something that we'll probably be able to, to assist you with. Uh, Ryan, if you could go to the next slide, I think you're you're taking over from here to jump into data modules and data sets. Great, thanks, Dustin. So, um, I figured that I would get the the big question out of the way first, uh, and then and then we can proceed because I, I think whenever I talk about data modules or data sets or data modeling and Cognos and where it is today in the direction, um, the first thing everybody asks me is this right is framework manager going away so the short answer to that uh, is no framework manager is not going away um, and and you know everything i'm going to show you today about data modules and data sets you're going to see there's there's a ton of great features and new capabilities that go beyond what's capable with framework manager but framework manager is not going away um, the long answer is that no, it's not going away, but but here's the situation. Uh, IBM has committed to supporting FM indefinitely. So there's no uh, end of life date. Uh, um, it's We anticipate that it's going to work forever. I mean, until IBM says otherwise. Um, and whenever that day does come, I'm sure they're going to give us a, a huge uh, heads up. Um, but the situation with framework manager is that it's not going to receive any future enhancements. So. We can expect bug fixes, it will stay current, it will continue to work with Cognos um, for the foreseeable future, but there's not gonna be a big new framework manager feature or new framework manager UI or anything like that. And then all future development is gonna focus on data modules, data sets, and, and you know anything new that they may add to the web-based modeling experience, right? So the long answer is, is still no, framework manager is not going away. But it's time to start planning for the future. Um, now, what does that future look like, and, and how do data modules and data sets fit into it? So what is the perception of reality versus the reality of data modules and data sets? The perception of data modules seems to be you know, that they're only for end users, um, it, it, that it's really a self-service thing, and that nobody who's uh, an IT or a BI pro would really be interested in them, that they lack many framework manager features, that they, you know, they only work with Cognos 11. I hear that sometimes, like, well, if I build a data module, I can't build a report off of it, right? Because reports are from framework manager and dashboards are from data modules. 
um, or people will think that framework manager and, and data modules don't work together at all. Um, and then the big one that, that I hear uh, a lot is that, you know, these features, uh, end user data blending, data modeling, uploading Excel files, creating data sets, that these are a governance nightmare and that, you know, we, we don't want to do this in our Cognos environment because we, we're worried it's too hard to manage, right? Now, the reality, and I, I will say some of these things were true in very early Cognos 11 releases, right? But the, the reality at this point is that, they, they yes, they're great for self-service, but they're also great for IT. And we have a lot of customers who are finding success with that. Uh, most of the gaps between framework manager and data modules are closed in the 11.1 release. Not all, but most. Um, and they work with all Cognos offering features. There's no restriction if you build a data module to what you can or can't do with it. They do work great together with your existing models, whether they're framework manager models or transformer models, or you're connecting to a Microsoft Analysis Services Cube, right? Um, your existing legacy BI content works great with these features, and I'll highlight that in the demo today. And then, you know, when it comes to the idea that maybe they're a governance nightmare, I think our perspective at PM Square is really, what good is governance if your end users are just going to work around it, right? Um, if you don't turn on any features that allow them to do their own data exploration or upload spreadsheets uh, or do their own data blending within Cognos, what they're going to do is they're going to go around you and find some other place to do it, right? Uh, they're going to acquire Tableau or they're going to get Power BI or even just do it in Excel. At the end of the day, uh, they're going to find a way to do what they need to do to get their jobs done. Um, so your governance is actually enhanced if they do those things in Cognos versus if they do their, them somewhere else. And really, at the end of the day, the reality is that if you're a longtime Cognos customer, you 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 know maybe started in Cognos seven or eight, you went to Cognos ten, now you're on Cognos eleven, um, but you're still kind of doing things in the the Cognos 8 or 10 way, you're very IT driven. Um, you, you, you take in requests, the IT team, IT team builds standard reports. Those reports are sent out as PDFs. Um, the key to modernizing your Cognos environment and moving beyond that IT led reporting to do something that is, is truly agile and is truly self-service within Cognos is to utilize the data modules and data sets features. And we've really um, seen that borne out, I think, in the last year. PM Square has worked with a number of customers to roll these out and really change the way that, uh, that BI is done in their organization and change the way that Cognos is perceived in the organization. Um, and we really do not see a way to do that without utilizing these features. Now, how, how is it that these are the bridge to kind of a more modern way of doing BI and Cognos? Well, what they do is they make it easy to clean and prep existing framework manager models for self-service. This is a huge one, and I'm going to show it uh, right away in, our, in the demo. Um, they make it very easy to dramatically enhance existing model performance. If you have a model that you built a long time ago, you know, the data warehouse is now 10 years old. It's accumulated 10 years worth of data. Queries are slow. We can dramatically improve that performance with these features. Um, combine your existing models with new databases, new models, Excel spreadsheets very quickly and easily. Lots of features. I, I'm going to try to show all of these today. Really, there's, there's so many, it's difficult to show them all uh, kind of in one sitting. But, you know, the ability to do relative time out of the box. Uh, you know, create multi-table views, cross-grain queries. That's all in data modules now, and many Cognos customers don't realize that. Um, you know, and then the ability to rapidly prototype and deliver both dashboards and professional reports. It's, you know, as an IT person, um, using these new features will allow you to take user requirements, build a prototype in a matter of hours rather than days or weeks, like if you were going through Framework Manager and Report Studio in the Cognos 10 days, um, and start to deliver that, you know, move into an iterative development cycle where you're receiving requests, building prototypes, getting those prototypes in front of the users, um, and, and enhancing your designs, your models, your dashboards, you know, in a very agile, rapid way compared to what we're used to in the Cognos 10 world. So that's really what I'm hoping to show today um, as I go through the demo. 
And, uh, you know, please do. Um, I will say when I, I do this presentation occasionally at user groups uh, or for customers, and there's always a ton of questions. So please do put your questions uh, in the GoToWebinar section, uh, and I'll try to answer as many of them as possible after the demo. Um, and then we always do, I don't know if, if you've attended PM Score webinar before, but we always do send out all of the questions we were asked with the answers afterwards. So even if I don't get to it, we will send you the answer um, afterwards. So, so please do ask. And with that said, no more uh, talky talky. Let's jump into the demo. So, so uh, here I have uh, an instance of uh, Cognos up and running. And what I'm going to show first is strictly focused on uh, the data set feature and how you can use it if you have framework manager models that are you know, uh, un unwieldy, that were not designed for self-service, that really require a kind of a developer's understanding of the model to know that, hey, you can't use these two tables together or you, know, you have to set this flag to Y in order to get valid data, all that type of stuff. For many of my customers, uh, it makes them very, uh, I would say, nervous about exposing that framework manager model to end users for self-service in the dashboarding tool. So what we're going to look at first is, hey, how can data sets fix that, right? So what I'm going to do is, is I'll go ahead in here and I'm going to navigate to the one of the sample packages, um, and from there build a data set. It's very easy to do. I think you know one of the problems with it really is that it's kind of hidden. A lot of people don't even know about it because the only way to access it is to go to a data set, click on the More menu, and then choose or go to a, a data source rather, a package or a data module, anything. I go to the more menu and then choose create data set, right? I can't get to it through the new menu. I really can't get to it anywhere else. So a lot of people miss it. Um, when I click on it, it's going to open the data set page. And, you know, for those of you who are report authors, this should be pretty familiar to you. Um, you know, what it really is, is that they just kind of reskinned the report authoring suite, right? Um, I can go ahead and here's that the go sales package. I can go through and choose. Uh, whatever pieces of information I want, right? So um, in this case, we're going to look at the Go Sales query, and I'll just grab a couple elements here. Um, like, let's grab the date. Now, you'll notice when I drag that in, it executes the query and shows me the data immediately, right? So as I'm building, I can see what's happening, uh, see what data I'm bringing in, and make sure that this data set is actually what I want, right? Grab some retailer information. Uh, say we take the retailer site code, we'll drop that in. Product info. So I'm just grabbing kind of a, you know, just a, an overall, anybody who's ever worked with the Go Sales, like if you've taken Cognos training, um, I'm sure you're very familiar with this information. And I'm just going to grab all of the uh, measures except for planned revenue, drop them in. So you see it's really easy to build this. It's executing the queries on the fly. Now, there's a couple things I can do in here if I want, right? Um, it's in preview mode. Now, let's imagine I was building something that took a while to return the data. I could turn preview mode off by clicking this button, and now I'm just seeing kind of the structure of the table I'm building rather than the data itself. Um, and you do also have access to some features in here that are uh, pretty useful. Um, I can filter these and sort these, which uh, does come in handy for improving performance. You generally want to filter these, the columns in the order that you think they'll be displayed in a visualization. So, for example, you know, date is very common as the x-axis on a on a line chart, right? So, um, we'll filter the whole data set by date so that query performance is improved. Um, and then, if you do know how to write calculations in, in Cognos, if I double click on any of these column headers, you'll see it opens the expression editor from uh, the Cognos report authoring tool. So when I'm done with all of that, uh, I can see I have the data I want. I go ahead and I, I click on the Save button. I choose Save As, uh, navigate to a, the location where I want to save this. Say so in this case, we'll go into uh, the Demo Assets folder. I'll just create a new folder, uh, for example. Uh, 
All right, so I create the data modules webinar folder. I'm going to give this data set a name and click Save. So what did I just do? I defined a data set um, so that Cognos can use it to build uh, an in-memory object for that contains this data, right? If I go and take a look at this data set in the content, in our Cognos content, you can see, as I pull it up, here's data module webinar, here's the data set. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and, and tell it to refresh. What it's doing right now is it is executing the query, pulling data from a SQL Server database, um, and then it's going to take that data and load it into an Apache Parquet file, right? The Apache Parquet file type is a, kind of a, a big data um, or a Hadoop file a storage type. It's a columnar data storage, very common uh, if you're, you know, kind of saving off data sets in the big data world. Um, it's going to take that data, house it in the Cognos content store, and then at runtime, what it's going to do is it's going to take that Parquet file, load it into the memory of the Cognos application server, um, and then allow you to interact with it there instead of querying the underlying database, right? So what this does um, is it takes kind of a slice of an existing framework manager model and splits it off into an in-memory object that uh, Cognos can use in a, in a highly performant, interactive way for self-service. And this is one of the huge advantages of data sets. For those customers who have uh, bit those unwieldy framework manager models that you've been working, you know, you've, you've have built up all sorts of tech debt over the last 10 years, and now you can't put them in front of your end users because they're too hard to understand, a very easy way to remedy that is to build these data sets where you just have um, a section of the data in that framework manager model pre-compiled, loaded into memory for, for blazing fast performance in, in a way that your end users can understand. So you can see it took about a minute to, to load, right? Um, if I want to take a look at it, I can click on it and look at the properties. In the properties, I can get some interesting information. Um, it took a minute and a half to load. It has 10 columns. It has 375,000 rows. Uh, I can also schedule it in here. So this is really important to understand. It's an extract of the data that gets loaded into Cognos's memory. So if you have uh, an underlying system that's a, that is kind of you know has a high data velocity, uh, or you need re near real time data, this isn't going to work as well. Uh, but certainly for anything where it's okay to have a, even a, even a couple minute lag between what's in the underlying database in here, um, this works really well. And then, as you can see, I can schedule it just like a report. So data warehouse load finishes at, at 8 a.m. every morning. I schedule this to run at 8.15 to extract the data and load this data set. And you can see I can use this directly in the dashboard tool. So if I go into create dashboard, I say OK. Right Here's that data set I loaded. I'm going to just choose you know, something like um, date and revenue plunk this in. I won't build much of a dashboard here, but just to show you how this works. Um, you can see, you know, it's gone ahead and, and built a visualization for me. The query came back very quickly. Um, it took a minute and a half to load this data. It's not taking a minute and a half for me to query it, right? So that's the difference between performance going against the underlying database and performance going against the data set. Um, so this, I mean, in my mind, this is a hugely important feature that most of my customers we're not aware of uh, until I started working with them and, and trying to educate them on, on what really the power of, of this feature. I mean, a lot of them have had a lot of success with that. So um, I'm going to pause here. We're going to do a quick poll and then I'm going to jump into, OK, how do these fit into the bigger picture? Right. I've taken some data. I've extracted out of framework manager. Now I want to merge it up with some other pieces of information. How do I do that using data? Ryan, which poll were you wanting to launch? I can launch it for us real quick. Yeah, it's the um, 
uh, data set. Have you ever uploaded a data set poll? I launched it now. Okay. Okay, so the poll is open. So go ahead and vote. Um, I will be very encouraged if if the uh, if yes is is above like I don't know twenty five or thirty percent. Definitely a year ago, virtually none of my customers knew anything about this feature, um, and so uh, you know, I, I've been working really hard to to kind of get the um, information out there that this is something that is available and people should be using. All right, it looks like we've got uh, approximately 80% of the people have voted, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and share the results, which you will be pleasantly surprised, Ryan. Awesome. So it looks like what forty percent say yes. That is that is uh, very encouraging. I think if we'd done this poll a year ago, it would have been ten or fifteen tops. Um, so that's great. Okay. So uh, now uh, getting to uh, data modules. Let's take a look at. Now that we've extracted this, what can we do in a data module? I'm going to go ahead and uh, open a data set in data modules, right? So you'll see here I have a data set called revenue. I'll choose create data module. It's going to load, show me that data set. Looks exactly the same as any other table. If I had directly connected to a database or uploaded an Excel file, they all look the same in here. Um, you can see the, the elements of it. And now at this point, I can immediately start uh, doing something to it. And the reality is I probably wouldn't recommend that um, that you create data sets and then build visualizations or you know use the exploration feature directly on the data set. I would probably always import it into a data module first. The reason being that uh, even if you don't think you're going to need any of these data module features, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you know your expectations uh, always or your plans always change when they come into conflict with your end users, right? So um, putting it into a data module will give you maximum flexibility going forward, and, and that's what I recommend. So some of the awesome new features in 11.1. .1. Um, the first thing that I that I really love is how it handles dates. The, so let's take a look at this date. You'll see um, I click on it. Uh, it automatically pulls open a preview in the grid view here of what my data is. And as I'm modeling, you'll see that, that this grid view updates to reflect the changes I make. I'm going to choose split. This split feature has gotten really powerful, especially when it comes to how it handles dates. You'll see it's recognized that I have a date data type, and it says, okay, what would you like to create? Uh, well, I already have date, so I'm not going to use that, but I'll choose year, month, and day. Maybe we'll include day of week as well. It gives me a preview of what it's going to create. I choose next. I can rename them if I want. In this case, I'm not going to, uh, but when I choose okay, you'll notice it immediately creates the year, month, day, and day of week fields. And I can see that data right here, um, a preview of it instantaneously. Um, so, you know, those many of, as many of you know, this is something that we, in the past, we would have had to manually define all these calculations in the expression editor. Now I, I just click and, and it's as easy as that. The other thing, that is um, really great that they've added here is the ability to immediately build relative time categories. So if I go and up here to the add data sources option and choose add new sources, I can go ahead and navigate to um, this calendars folder and then choose the fiscal calendar. So IBM provides a fiscal calendar and a Gregorian calendar with Cognos. You can build custom calendars, and there's information available on IBM's website on how to do that um, if you have a unique fiscal calendar or something like that. Um, but in this case, I'll use the out-of-the-box fiscal calendar. I choose OK. You see it adds this fiscal calendar icon here to let me know that that's the calendar I've added. And now if I go ahead and look at date and I look at the properties of this field, so we'll click on date, choose properties, and I can see on here uh, this lookup reference column. 
I'll choose fiscal calendar. And now look at what it did here. I expand this. It automatically built a whole host of relative time categories for me. So this is something that, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, the last tool that IBM offered that, that did this automatically for us was Transformer, right? And doing this in Framework Manager was always a pain and doing it in reports was a pain. Um, you know, once you got good at it, maybe you could bust these out pretty quickly. But as someone who was new to Cognos, understanding how to write these calculations, you took a long time to get that to that level of sophistication. And even if you were good at it, it took a long time to actually go and physically do it. Um, now we can do it in a snap uh, just by clicking a couple buttons. Once we've done that, we can do the same thing for our measures. So if I go down and I look at, at revenue, I have a lookup reference op option for revenue as well. Um, I'll choose the lookup reference of revenue date. And now I've got, let me expand this a little bit so we can see it better. Now I've got relative time uh, for revenue as well, uh, where I can see you know, prior month revenue, prior year revenue, just a couple clicks to do that. So, you know, if you're a, a, an, an old, uh, you know, if, if you're an old hand at Framework Manager, um, I'm, you probably know how to do everything I just showed you, but it would take you a lot longer um, than the amount of time it just took us there. Uh, of course, there are a lot of other features in here, you know, um, calculations, uh, custom calculations, things like that. But, uh, you know, those have, have been available in here for a while. Um, just for the sake of time, I think, you know, what's going to be uh, most exciting to look at um, is to take a look at how we can start to incorporate other types uh, of data into this. So we've got our revenue information. Remember, this is a data set. We extracted it from a framework manager model. Why did we do that? Because the FM model was, was too hard to work with. And this took just the information we needed and loaded it into an in-memory data type that we can interact with here in data modules. Now, um, one of the pieces of information I have, if I click on it, you'll see is retailer site code. So maybe to do our analysis, um, retailer site code, eh, it doesn't really mean anything to most people, right? Um, this is a code that represents, you know, the individual stores for the retailers in the go sales data set. And I want more information than that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and add an additional data source, choose add new sources. And this time, uh, I'm going to choose to add a data server. A data server is really a Cognos 11 term for a data source connection from Cognos 10, uh, for those of you who uh, maybe haven't played around with it before. If I click on Gray Outdoors Sales, ask me what schema I want, I'll choose this schema right here. You say, okay, I'm gonna manually select which tables I want. Uh, so I'll grab retailer, retailer site, and retailer type, and choose okay. Right, so now what have I done? Well, let's look at the diagram view to see. So here I've got that fiscal calendar. I've got the revenue data set extracted from my framework manager model. And I've got these three tables that are direct references to a SQL Server database. Now, what's really cool in this version um, and, and is a huge step up from the 11.0 release of data modules is um, my ability to uh, create kind of a, a view that is a virtual table sitting on top of multiple underlying tables. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and join a retailer to the other two columns, right? Um, so I can, I can pull, you know, the retailer names, the retailer location, retailer country, all that stuff into my analysis. I click on retailer, choose create relationship. It opens up this screen where I can define a relationship. So I'll say, okay, um, well, the relationship between retailer and retailer sites is based on retailer code. I'll control click. It gives me this nice preview so I can look at the actual retailer code values to see if maybe this join makes sense. In this case, it does. Um, each retailer has multiple retailer sites or so cardinality is good. I choose match selected columns and then refresh. It joins the two tables together so I can scroll across and maybe I count, uh, I can catch some double counting or other funky stuff going on by a poorly defined join. If this is what I like, I choose okay. Here I can see our, the relationship between retailer and retailer site. Now I wanna do the same thing uh, to retailer type. So I'll choose create relationship again. We'll go through and choose retailer type. 
In this case, we're going to join on the retailer type code. Uh, now, we want to change this join from uh, one to many to a many to one. So I'll go here, choose many to one. Now you'll notice each retailer type belongs to multiple retailers. I choose match selected columns, refresh to make everything's good, make sure everything's good, and then I choose OK. Now, at this point, I could maybe, you know, join retailer to revenue, um, and that would work. But what is will be much clearer for my end users and I think easier to support going forward is to actually create a brand new table. So I, I click on the data module, choose create new table. I select which existing tables I want to use to build this new table which is retailer site, retailer type, and retailer. And then I say, create a view of tables and choose next. Here it's gonna ask me, okay, well, uh, what elements do you wanna bring forward from these tables? I don't wanna bring all of them, so I'm gonna unselect everything to start. Um, and we'll just go through and grab, you know, company name uh, and the retailer from, uh, from retailer, we'll grab retailer site code, and then kind of the geographic information from retailer site. And we will grab the retailer type name in English uh, from the retailer type table. And let's call this table retailer location. I click finish. You'll see here's the retailer location table. It looks and acts exactly like our data set or any of the tables that are directly referencing the SQL Server query uh, or SQL Server database, but it's actually a virtual table that we've built within Cognos, right? And now to make things really easy on my end users, what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and join retailer location to the revenue column based on the retailer site code. And I'm gonna create a new folder. We'll say, we'll call this uh, retailer data sources, okay? I'll grab those, read the retailer location or the retailer data source tables by control clicking them all, drag them into the retailer sources folder. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hide that folder. So why did I do that? Well, let's take a look at what this looks like in the report authoring tool in Cognos. So I go up here and I click try it. It pops open the report authoring tool and you'll see that uh, my report authors are my self-service users, whether they're doing it here or in dashboards, what they're gonna see is a table called revenue and a table called retailer location. So I've, I've just dramatically simplified things uh, for them to consume and I've made things easier for me in the future um, in, you know, when it comes to supporting uh, this type of, of model going forward. So, uh, you know, I, that alone is a huge advancement in, in these data modules and, and makes it um, much easier uh, or, or, you know, much uh, more comparable to what you had in Framework Manager. One thing, a, a lot of times at this point, I get a lot of questions from people related to, uh, okay, you know, I'm starting to see maybe how I could use this, even if I am an IT person versus just a, uh, you know, kind of a self-service user who wants to blend together a couple spreadsheets, right? But um, what about my, you know, I'm used to Framework Manager. Um, so well, what, what, what about the database view and the business view and the presentation view, right? Um, what do I do with that? Well, it takes a little bit of shifting, shifting your thinking, and it took me a little bit of shift in my thinking too, but um, you know, in data modules, we really kind of collapse them all into one, right? We, we don't have separate views where first we model every database relationship and definition, then we add the uh, you know, business logic and the business names. We kind of we do it all in one place, um, and that makes things much, much faster when it comes to 
your ability to model and deliver something like this. And I think as I've shown here, you know, in cases where you do still need some of that abstraction, where, hey, like, hey, I have some source objects that I want to define some relationships on, and then I want to have, like, a second layer of objects, a business view of objects that I do some different transformations to and have some different relationships, this is how you would handle that. You know, you, you join those source objects together, you create a view, uh, kind of a view, this retail location, which is, you know, a, a view table combining three underlying tables together. Um, and then I define a relationship between that and my revenue. Um, and I've gone ahead and really, you know, done, done a lot. I, I've done a lot of what you would have done in Framework Manager, but I did it much, much, much more quickly. So, um, you know, at this point, I can go ahead and save this. If I save it, it's instantly available. This is a big difference between data modules and framework manager. It's, it's just instantaneously available um, to anybody in the environment if I built this in production. Um, and it can be used right away to, to start building objects on. And also, any changes I make here will instantly be available. Uh, you know, they'll instantly flow through to reports and dashboards that are built on top of it, right? So, you know, if we call this, say, uh, sales and retailer module, go ahead and save it. Um, I can start using things with it immediately, right? Now, at this point, we've extracted something from Framework Manager into a data set. We've connected to three underlying SQL Server tables and built a, a view on top of them in here. Um, now, maybe our end users say, ah, but you know, we have some information in Excel that we'd like to add in as well. Well, how would I go about doing that? Um, it's really easy, actually. Um, you can go ahead, you go up here, you choose new sources. It's really exactly the same as, as adding anything else. Um, so if I go in here to our data module demo, look at the source objects, Maybe I have an Excel file that's got information about inventory levels for our products. Um, I upload it into Cognos. I navigate to it here. I choose OK. Again, treat it exactly the same as any other uh, table type in uh, data modules. And I could go ahead and you know join this to my revenue column or my revenue table. Choose Create Relationship go through a similar exercise. In this case, we're going to join on um, date and uh, the product, right? Or rather the, yeah, the product. So I can control click on both so you can see, you know, I'm doing a kind of a compound join. And the other thing I would point out here um, that's great about these is you'll notice the actual format of the two dates is different, right? And, and actually, even I myself have spent the last couple of months in data modules where I would go in and, and fix this, right? I would write a, a calc to fix this so that they were exactly the same. And then on a lark yesterday, um, I went ahead and, and took a look and said, okay, but, but do I really, like, what if I don't fix that and I try to join them together? Um, and it turns out that it works, right? Cognos figures out um, that those are not the same, uh, that those are, are really, even though they're in kind of different formats, that they're both dates and it joins them anyways. Um, so I choose OK. Now I've got a join there. Um, and if I click try it again, we can take a look at what that looks like. Um, and what I've done, you know, in the last, I mean, I've only been going here on data modules for a little uh, under 20 minutes. If you take a look at what I have, OK, I've got product inventory is an Excel spreadsheet um, that that an end user gave us that has inventory information, right? Retail location is a combination of three data sources or three tables from a SQL Server database that I've modeled into a, a virtual table to expose. Um, and revenue is an extract from a framework manager model that I've loaded into that in-memory parquet file and is available uh, within Cognos. And at this point, you can see um, that I can execute a query against all three of these, right? So if I look at retailer location, and maybe I'm interested in um, the retailer type name and the company name, I'll drag those in, right? Um, pulls that data from SQL Server, and then I say, okay, uh, well, I also want the quantity shipped from that Excel spreadsheet, so let's grab that and drag it in. Uh, and then, you know, if I, 
then I, I say, okay, and I also want to grab the, you know, maybe the sales target and the revenue uh, from, or the revenue rather from um, the framework manager model uh, that we uploaded, right? Or that we created that data set off of. And you can see it queries across all three and, and returns results. Um, and, and the result, uh, the results that returned were, were pretty quick. Um, and, you know, of course, it's a demo, right? So you think, yeah, the results that returned that were returned were quick, but, uh, well, it's a tiny amount of data, right? Um, well, you know, eh, not really. If you recall, like that, um, that uh, data set that we built had 350,000 rows. That's, that's not an astronomical amount of data, but I wouldn't call it small. Um, and in a case where, and this is where it's like, <laughs> It's kind of galaxy brain uh, level type stuff when, when I realized this, right? So let me save my module. Let's imagine we built something out like this. It's a little more complex. Um, and we've gotten ourselves into a situation where, hey, I, ex I execute a query and it has to go to, um, you know, it has to go to a SQL Server database and it fetches something out of Hive and it gets something out of two spreadsheets and it gets something out of a, a data set from a query and it gets something out of a data set from a transform like you know just all over the place right and then at that point let's say that the query performance is slow well what's what's really great about this is you know this data module um i can build a data set on top of and as we recall data sets the performance uh, can be very fast i'm positive i haven't looked at the questions yet but i'm positive one of the questions that has been asked is well, how big can the data set really be and how good are, is the performance? So here's what I'll tell you. Um, what I've been told by IBM is that in the current iteration, uh, you can do, you know, it's the performance is, is good, meaning like a couple seconds query performance up to 8 million rows in a data set. Now, of course, you need to have a server that's sized to handle that. So we need enough CPU and, and definitely enough memory to handle that, right? But about 8 million rows is what I've, I've been told by IBM. What I can tell you from my own hands-on experience is I worked with a customer where we had one data set with about 2.9 million rows, one data set with about 1.5 million rows. We joined them together in a data module. And then when we executed a query off of it, we got results back in about three seconds. Um, so the performance really is very good. Um, and I won't go through the full exercise of, of joining it, you know, but just to, you know, illustrate the point, you know, here I'm in a data, I'm in another data set. Um, again, we're pretending that my data module, the, you know, when I executed a query across all these different data sources, the performance wasn't great. Um, how would I, how would I juice that performance? I would come in here, grab these elements, build a new data set off of my data module, um, and then make that available to my end users. Uh, in order to query off of so that they would have great performance. And to them, it's just going to look like one table, right? Because that's what a data set looks like. Remember, this revenue is a data set. So I could then pull all these elements into a new data set, and I would have something that my end users pop open. They see a list of 15 or 20 elements. It's got great performance. And on the back end, it's actually pulling data from a, three different databases and two different framework manager models, right? And and all of that I'm able to do within um, data modules, you know, in a really quick amount of time, 25 minutes now I, I've, been, I've been building this. Now, obviously in a real production environment, it's gonna take you longer um, than 25 minutes, but just imagine how long it would take you to try to do what I just outlined in Framework Manager. Uh, I mean, it would take, you know, I don't know, I might retire uh, before, before I got finished doing something like that, right? Um, now, I'm sure there, there are other uh, data modules features um, that, that people are, are interested in. So I'll just, I'll just rush through a couple other great features that are in here as of this release. And then we'll wrap kind of the demo section um, and show you a, and move on to the questions. Uh, I do hope that, that there are some good questions out there. Um, I'm confident that there are. So some other uh, great features. One of the absolute best features in here um, is uh, you'll see if I uh, click on any of these, any of the tables, right? Um, and I look at create calculation. There's a new expression editor in data modules. It's also available in dashboards. I love, 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 love it. Uh, it has 
you know, it's really easy to um, to add things in here. Um, well, obviously it's easy to add things in here, but what are some of the features it has, right? So it has a preview mode, right? Click preview. Um, it will show me, uh, it's having some kind of problem here, but um, it will show me, you know, the results. Um, I can add comments. I can comment things out. Um, you know, it's got prettified features, high contrast mode. I can change the font. I can highlight just sections of code and hit preview, and it will only show me that section of code. So it's just a huge improvement from what we've, we've traditionally had in Cognos. Not in report often yet. I don't know if it's going to be or not, um, but I have told IBM that I think it should be, and, and I strongly encourage you uh, to do the same. Um, other great features that we have in here, uh, you know, if I take a look at any individual table, um, you'll see that uh, if I look at the properties of the table, I now have control over, say, um, caching options. So if I look under advanced, um, you'll see data cache where I can set, uh, like, I want to use the Cognos dynamic query mode to cache this information. I can choose, you know, um, how long the cache runs. Like how long do I want it to hold the data in cache? Maybe we say, hey, 10 minutes, I want you to hold information from just this table in cache. Okay, now this table has dynamic query caching turned on, the rest of them don't. I can also say, hey, is this a bridge or summary table? That will help inform Cognos how to roll up this information uh, when it's processing queries. Um, I have the ability in here to, uh, you know, do all sorts of like data cleaning um, and uh, different uh, ways to handle it, right? Like if I go into cleaning and I say, okay, you know, I want you to trim white spaces. I want you to convert product line all up upper cases, or maybe I want you to do a substring, or I want you to handle nulls a certain way. These are all things that in the past, you know, we would write a coalesce statement or we would, you know, write, uh, um, you know, just go into the expression editor and do something to, to you know, trim a string. Um, of course, you can still do that, right? But now you can do it really easily here as well, um, and it's something that your users can access. Another really great thing, if I take a look at these individual data sources, like let's take a look, you know, maybe I only want um, in, like retailers, uh, maybe I'm building something that's retailer facing. So our, our customers uh, or our retailers are gonna log into Cognos and we're gonna build reports for them, right? Um, but I wanna make it so only certain retailers, retailers can only see their own information. I can do that now in data modules with this set data security section where you see, I can define a filter. I'll go in and choose a, um, you know, group or role within Cognos. Let me just say analysis users um, for the sake of this example. And then I can say, hey, you know, um, analysis users can only see comp like the following companies. Right? This was a huge thing that people would say, well, I can't use data modules because it doesn't have the security and I need the security. Um, here's an example of, of uh, where you can put that in. Um, this is something, you know, I was working with Cognos Paul the other day, and, and we couldn't believe this, but it, it's even like I can go in here, and if I define, if I define a calculation um, where what I do is say I go ahead and look at the, um, no, I'm, I'm looking in the wrong place. That's why I'm not seeing what I expect. Here we go. You know, if I go in and I create a calculation that looks something like, you know, I'll, I'll just make something up, right? Like, uh, um, like this, right? This should be familiar to everybody who's been using, who's used Cognos in the past. I'm building a prompt, right? Well, if I have a column like this and then I use this column in dashboards, it will actually pop up in kind of a prompt page. Um, and make me select a month before it will allow me to proceed, right? Um, so really, like, just a ton of functionality in data modules that um, that, that was not available in the past. And, you know, I do want to highlight uh, data module functionality. Um, uh, and, I, and I hope, you know, there's a lot more I could show here, but we're coming up on the hour, and, and I don't want to, you know, make it so that people have to stay late. Um, although I am happy to, if you guys have questions, to go a little over and answer them. But, um, Really, more than showing you just the features and functionality of data modules, what I like, what I, the message I really want to be taken from this is that these are appropriate for IT people, and they will help you extend your legacy Cognos 10, um, your legacy Cognos 10, 
you know, models, your framework management models, your transformer models, um, to make them usable, make them fit into to Cognos and make it very, very easy to take that end user spreadsheet or that, hey, we got this information from Twitter and then now I want to marry it up with my framework manager information. Extract it, the, a data set from framework manager and build it in here. You know, do that, that, that joining in a data module and you'll be able to do it in, in literally a matter of minutes. Um, you know, uh, and, and that's the message that, that I want to be taken from this is it's not just for self-service. It has a real place in your IT, um, your, your IT BI workflow. Um, and it, it's really important, I think, that, that people start figuring out, you know, how are we going to, to use something like this? Um, so let me go ahead and minimize that. So um, that's basically the next steps I had here, um, you know, uh, are that, the figure, you know, experiment with these if you tried them in Cognos 11.0.4, um, you know, and, and you didn't find them to be very useful, they've come a long way. Um, so take a look at them uh, again if, if you've already looked at them and decided not to use them. Experiment with them. Consider how they change the way you do business. They really do enable uh, IT to adopt an agile uh, workflow that goes alongside end users. Um, you know, where end users can build the data module and then when it reach, reaches the level of complexity where they need a little help, they can they can give it to you, the professional data modeler to, to look at. Figure out how to deliver projects with these features when you get a request. Ask yourself, can I do it in data modules uh, before you default to framework manager? Um, and then figure, if you haven't rolled these out to your end users, please, please, please figure out a governance plan and a rollout plan for them. They will truly change the way your Cognos environment is perceived. Uh, in your organization, um, but it's incumbent on you if, if you're on a BI team that hasn't done it uh, to do that. You will be amazed at the type of engagement you're going to get out of your end users for this. So a couple more things and we'll get to questions. Uh, well, what to do next? The other thing to, met, to note is um, public training. So if you go to pmsquare.com, you will see uh, on the events section that we have a lot of great stuff coming up, uh, webinars, trainings, user groups. Um, we do have uh, coming up on April 24th, a public training course available for data modules where we will go over everything I showed you here and more because there were features I had to leave out because of time um, to teach you how to do, you know, walk you through hands on exactly um, what I just showed you. Again, that's um, April 24th. Uh, so it's coming up if you're interested, um, take a look on our website and, and register for it. We also have, you know, if you're interested in this, but but you need some, you would like some help deploying it, we do have kind of an, an out of the box uh, package service called called the Analytics Modernization Package. Um, it's four weeks. We come and do an evaluation of your BI workflow and SDLC. Um, we develop alongside you some new production environment uh, objects, data modules, data sets, dashboards, explorations, all of that stuff. Um, we help you create some self-service data sets for your end users off of your existing framework manager or transformer models. And we host uh, an end user education session um, with, uh, you know, so that we, we kind of show them what we built and make sure your end users are, are um, up to speed with that. So at that, with that said, um, let's go ahead and uh, close there. Um, we just have a couple minutes left for questions. Like I said, I'm, I'm happy to go a few minutes over if, if people um, want to keep going. Um, so uh, thank you. And um, Dustin, I don't know if you've been uh, looking at the, the questions, but um, what, uh, what are people asking? <clears throat> so Ryan, before we do that, we've got a couple more polls if people want to start asking questions. Um, so far, we don't have any. No, I'm joking. We actually have 52 questions. So <laughs> we've had a few okay. questions today. Um, <laughs> Excellent. So uh, I will go ahead and post the next poll, which is, uh, have you ever created a data module? All right, I'll give that another minute. We've got about 65% of attendees have voted. But that might be all we get. We're at 68%. Um, you guys are flying. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> While people are answering that, let's um, shoot me a question. Sure, that's a great idea. Um, let 
me scroll back to the top of these questions. <clears throat> uh, so obviously we won't get through all 50 something. If we don't answer your question today, we will uh, answer it in a follow-up email. Um, but the first question I had flagged is, uh, can data modules handle unions yet? Uh, yeah, actually, that's one of the options. Um, when I showed that, that um, create a view of join, I can't remember the terminology IBM uses for it, but when I showed that like join, when I uh, made that view table out of the three underlying tables, one of the options there is uh, uh, to create a union table instead of a join table. Okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and share the results. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how many of our attendees say that they have created data modules in the past. Oh, 55%, great, yeah. All right, um, so I'll ask one more question, then we got one more poll, so. Or maybe I'll, I'll post the poll and then ask the questions people can be answering. So our next poll is, do you think this webinar or additional training would benefit others? Um, in your organization. And then while people are answering that, so let's ask another one. Can data modules handle union? I'm oh, sorry, I already asked that one. Huh. Are there native <laughs> drill abilities in data modules? Are, are there what? Native drill abilities. Oh, I didn't show that. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, um, there's a feature called navigation uh, paths that it's really the same thing as creating like a hierarchy and transformer or if you were building a DMR, right? Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's, it, in fact, they're very easy to build and interact with. Um, and that's something that will be covered in that training course that I, that I mentioned a few minutes ago. All right. Awesome. I'll ask another one since that was a quick answer. Uh, how much effort is it to go from 11 to 11.1 to get these features? Um, honestly, it's not much. So it's, it's an over-the-top install. We're not really recommending that you, you spin up whole new environments and, and like migrate the content like you would from going from 10 to 11. So um, it's an over-the-top install. It's, um, we haven't, in our experience, we haven't seen situations where reports are breaking or anything like that. Uh, so it, it's been really relatively painless, uh, at least in our customer base. Okay. <clears throat> I will ask another question. We're at 63% of attendees have, have voted, so I'll leave the poll up for another minute. Um, so this question is, so we have warehouse subject areas that certain departments have access to that include detailed PMI um, about people. Some of that subject area data would be extremely useful to other areas when rolled up to counts or I guess summarized data and somehow made anonymous. Uh, would a data set be a good use for that? Absolutely, it is a perfect use for that. Um, so what you would do is you just create a data set. Um, so I, again, it's another thing I didn't show, but on the data set screen, there's a little button that is like, for relational data, do you want me to um, aggregate and summarize it or no? So make sure that button's clicked, and then you know you pull in the information that you need without pulling in any of the PMI data. Um, and, and allow Cognos to aggregate it and then save off that data set and expose that to people in other parts of the organization. Perfect use for it. Awesome. All right, we're still below 70% voted, so I'm gonna leave the poll up for another question or two. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think this next question must be coming from someone that you paid, Ryan, because it relates to one of our new products we're developing. So uh, is it possible to convert an FM model to a data module? <laughs> Yeah, it must be. I, I don't. I don't know if we want to say too much, but um, yes, it is. Uh, it is possible. So possible. Is it possible? Like, is it? Is there a button to do it in Cognos? No. Um, however, it is possible, and the reason I know that it's possible is because um, we're we are working on something in PM Score Labs that will allow that to happen in a very. Um, uh, in a very easy manner, and I won't say a whole lot more than that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll elaborate on that. We're, we're, we're trying to build that easy button. So if anyone does have that need, please let us know. Um, we'll be sending a follow-up email to everyone who attended today. So if, if that was your question, or if that also relates to something you're interested in, we'd be happy to, to help. Um, got another question. Determinants are used in framework manager models to allow use of dimensions to facts that are at higher level than the dimension leaf level. Is this yeah. functionality available in data modules? 
You guys are crushing it today. You're asking all the good questions. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it's another thing I didn't show because of time. It's called column dependencies. So um, it's a little, I think that the UI is better than determinants. I think maybe it's easy to, easier to understand, but um, then sometimes I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but it is there. Um, and it works. It works really well. So um, column dependencies uh, is the feature. It is in there. Um, I, I have utilized it with clients, um, and we've been pretty happy with how it functions. So, yes. All right. Well, we're at 74% voted, and we're also two minutes over. I'm going to go ahead and probably ask at least one more question, but first I want to share the poll results. <clears throat> so, yay, 94%. Uh, percent of you just agreed to us start to start marketing to you. No, um, ninety-four percent <laughs> said that this would be useful for others in your organization. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. If you have people you think would be interested, we'd love to hear about that. Or if uh, you're interested in us providing more of a, a specialized class around this to anyone at your organization, we'd love to know that as well. Um, so. I'll ask at least one more question. So the next one is, why would you use data sets rather than pulling revenue from your data server? Uh, well, in this case, I mean, I did it just for um, just for the example. I mean, you are right. Like, the revenue was available in that data server. Um, uh, the, one of the reasons you would do it, though, is like, let's imagine your data server has the revenue information, but the query performance is, is poor, right? Um, because the underlying database is, uh, you know, has has performance issues, or because in order to get the revenue information, you have to do a complex series of joins because you're going against an operational system or something like that, right? Um, rather than just go directly against the data server, you could create a data set, schedule the data set data extraction, and then write your queries against the data set, you get very good performance. So, so that's why you would use that even if you had the option to go directly against the data server. OK. Um, I think we had a lot of like, multiple questions that related to the, the idea around performance, um, okay. how performance might relate to this. So rather than read any specific question, can you talk a bit about how uh, the use of data modules might affect server performance and what considerations you'd recommend? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. There's a couple of things to consider, right? When it comes to data sets, they are loaded into the application server memory, right? So you're going to need to both um, increase the application server memory if you have memory constraints. And what I mean by memory constraints is like, if you're really going to be using this a lot, you're going to need a lot of <laughs> you need a lot of RAM, right? Um, uh, so there's that to consider. Um, now the uh, the other thing, data sets, are, are, they used to be processed by the query service. They, they no longer are. There's a separate service that processes them. It's actually a Spark SQL service, um, which is why it performs so well. Um, uh, so there's that when it comes to data sets. When it comes to data modules, data modules run in a dynamic query mode, right? The dynamic query mode is a 64-bit process, consumes more memory um, than your, your um, Cognos query mode. Uh, framework manager models, um, right? So you're going to need more memory there too. Um, now you're going to need more, potentially more memory, but for sure you probably want to go in and take a look at your query service settings and increase the amount of the maximum amount of uh, memory available to the query service. We've been increasing it up to like um, maybe 16 gigs uh, per query service process, which you know if you imagine you've got three or four processes running on the same machine, we're talking about 64 uh, gigs of memory at least on that machine just to handle the query service processes. So not everybody's going to be in that situation, but the general thing I'm recommending is, yes, you need more RAM especially, um, and you need to increase the amount of RAM that your processes can consume. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you for an excellent demo and webinar. We have uh, we ended up over, over 60 questions uh, by the end, so uh, obviously we won't be able to get through all the questions today, but we will follow up with everyone. So if your question was not answered, we'll, we'll be following up soon with an email. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to email contact at pmsquare.com. Um, and uh, Ryan, if you're going to go back to the PowerPoint, I think we have a uh, slide with your contact info if anyone wants to email you directly. I will. Yeah, um, I think you should be able to see it now. Perfect. Yeah, so feel we'll free to reach out to me as well. We'll leave the webinar up for another couple minutes. We're still getting a couple of questions. 
Um, and again, we'll respond to anything that we receive in the, the questions area. And if we, uh, if you don't hear from us in the next day or two, feel free to reach out, but you should hear from us by, uh, by the end of this week. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Bye.